course you can see here that I've taken the, the deflected double weave scarf off of my loom. This end of it has already been, I, I've done the fringe twisting, the twisted fringe on this end. So we're going to throw that out of the way um, for the moment. The middle of the scarf is tied to a kitchen chair because I need to be able to put tension on it like this while I do the fringe twisting. So I'm just going to twist a couple of these for you to watch as I do it. And I'm doing four threads per one, two, three. Is that four? Yeah, there's four. So here we go. We'll use the alligator clip, clip on four. Use the alligator clip, clip on another four. But here's where I need the tension. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm doing about 20 turns each time. Get that out of the way. For the length of thread I've got that makes sense. So there's one set of twisted fringes. First twisted fringe on this end. We'll do the rest of the Raised. Let's kind of comb them out so they're easy to work with. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and there we go. So we'll do the next one. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Those two were still twisted, they're still separate. Now we just tie a little knot in the end. See, they're still totally separate. And go, let go, they twist. Okay, we'll do this. I can just hear you saying, that was hard to see because it's in gray. Yeah, you're right, it is. So I'm going to do one more set in white. There's four threads of white. It's one, two, three, four more threads of white. Grab these together, grab the ends, alligator clip on the first one, alligator clip on the second one, twist one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, Just a simple half knot. All you need for this. Again, you can see they're still totally separate until the magic moment when I let go and go and they're twisted. I finished most of the fringe twisting on this and before, I want to flip it over and do the other side because maybe you can see that well right here you can see that the white weft didn't start until after I had woven 16 picks of uh, gray. So the white starts up a little farther and these white ones down here actually don't start until way up where my fingers first poking through there. So they start on the other side, but I don't think I have, before this, 
showing you the other side of this scarf. Because this is the side that was visible on top as I was weaving. So hopefully you will see the difference. I was simply amazed when I took this off the loom and saw the other side. It doesn't look like the same scarf. So let's flip it over and look at that. We've got the here you've got the, the big circles with the little connectors. Here you've got a small circle and a dash and a cross. And I must admit that truly amazed me when I first saw it. So I need to do a little more fringe twisting on this side. Let's count out the right number of threads. There's four and there's another four. I'm just going to do one set on camera here and then I will finish the rest of this off camera. But I wanted you to see that side of the scarf before I completely finish it up and throw it in the water to fill it. One. Now I need a little bit. I need a few more twists because this is a little bit longer. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. A little bit longer section. Those white ones. Still have to tie the knot in the end of it. Probably harder for you to see that knot than it is for me, but I can't do much about that. There we go. There's one. I'll do this, this, and this. I already did that end. Um, but isn't this neat? Look at that. The circles, dashes, and crosses that don't exist on that, on that side. This is truly an amazing design that I I read in the article that I took this from that it was going to happen, but I couldn't imagine it until I saw it myself. So I'll finish this part and we'll get on to the next in a little bit. Okay there YouTubers, there's the kitchen sink. Now here's what we're going to do. This is nice and dry and you can see that I've finished twisting and now I'm going to do wet finishing or fulling depending on what you want to call it. Just put the whole bloody thing in there. The water is kind of lukewarm. It's, it's not cold water but it's certainly not hot water. And um, we'll just keep that. There, there can be many people who say to use different things to do this. And I even found a YouTube where they were showing how they did a YouTube video, um, some guy from England doing historical archaeology, who said that fullers, when they were trying to full wool like this 500 years ago, would um, they'd put it like in big barrels like vats and then walk around on it like if it was uh, that they were stomping grapes, but instead of putting water in there they used stale urine. Well, I don't feel like pissing on my um, wool, so we're using clean water and a clean sink. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. That's enough for me. Um, I'm putting in a little bit of dish soap just to um, have some soap in there. Some people would say, oh no, you don't use dish soap, you should use, uh, well, let's see. Wool is nothing but the hair off a sheep, so why not use shampoo? That'll work. Some people would say to use woolite. Use whatever works best for you. Play around, experiment. My goal here is with a little bit of soap and a little bit of lukewarm water, give this three or four minutes of gentle washing in the sink, okay? Um, I suppose you could put it in the wash machine on the delicate cycle. I don't know. Do whatever feels best to you. 
but there's what's going to look good to me. And obviously, I am going to have to rinse the soap out of it, so I'll drain the water out after I've given it a little bit of a gentle agitation here. And um, this will be how I will. The fibers, when you buy this wool, it's it's got kind of an oiliness to it and a stiffness, a sizing, whatever you want to call it, which makes it easier to work with when you're weaving it. But I want it to be a little bit softer for actual wearing, and so that's why I'm doing this wet finishing, this fulling, whatever you want, whatever word you want to use. Again, the goal is just to loosen up those fibers a little bit, kind of smooth out the pattern. You get the idea. I'm going to turn the camera off. There's no point in you watching me watching me wash this for too much longer. Now we'll get to the next step. Turn off the camera. All right, YouTube, the scarf is out of the sink. It has been agitated for a little while, rinsed twice. Now it's laying on the kitchen table on a big old bath towel. Now what I'm going to do is just fold the edges in. Fold it up and I'm going to roll it and squish it to try and get a little bit more of the liquid out. Then I'm just going to open it up to the air and lay it out and let it dry. I'm not going to hang this because I don't want to stretch it. So I'm just doing this to try and let this bath towel absorb some of the liquid. Okay, the table's wet so I must have gotten some liquid out of it. difference between the two sides. These, the circles, these were more like squares before. They've turned more like circles. This is, I'm more and more impressed with the way this is looking. And you look, so the, the flip side of this, what looks like a circle here, is that black square there. Um, yeah, Judy just handed me this. This is the one little piece that I did as a sample. So you can see, here's what it, what the pattern looked like without the fulling for this side. Still got fringes on it, of course. And here's what this side looked like without the fulling, just straight off the loom. And look what that water treatment did to the shape. I think it's pretty neat. So. That's it. We're going to let it dry. Hi there, YouTubers. Hey, um, it's done. This is the final result of uh, the deflected double weave scarf. It's been fold and wet finished, whatever you want to call that. It is off of uh, the towels where it was drying. And you can see the entire scarf now. Nice, fairly long one. Feels really nice. It's, I mean, wool is never totally soft in my opinion, but um, this turned out really neat. And um, I'm quite happy with the results that I got with it. So there you go. This That'll be the final video in this uh, three video series on doing deflected double weave. The scarf turned out just fantastic. I'm very happy with the results. I don't know who's going to get it, who's going to wear it yet, but that's a totally separate issue. Um, I'm still happy with the results. So, my usual ending, if you're a subscriber, thanks a million for being there. 
If you're not a subscriber but you like my videos, you like the weaving, the cooking, or the travels to Heritage Hills Print Shop, um, which I posted I think yesterday, uh, I would always appreciate more subscribers and uh, hearing comments from people on anything that I've done or likes, whatever works best for you. If you want to remain anonymous, that's fine too. I fully understand. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you next time around on YouTube. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.